I want to explore the stepping stones that ancestors may have laid down for us, but also the impossible stories and anecdotes of those that were like me or black and trans and how they lived in the past. And because we don't have much uh, historical literature, imagining the ancestors in the works allows us to kind of conjure up some. And even though they're not necessarily real all the time. The, the extrapolation of their existence lets us place ourselves within history. My name is Danielle Brathwaite Shirley. I'm an artist and archivist, and I'm going to slip in tech queen as well. And mainly what I do is I record the lives and stories of black trans people in interactive media, such as a video game, and then build an installation that houses those so that the environment reflects those I'm working with. So I'm based between Berlin and London. The thinking space is in Studio Voltaire in London. It's where most of the writing for every project gets done. Space in Berlin is the formulation of how everything needs to work. <laughs> like the, the work we're making now about this uh, black trans god who comes back from the dead. How you tell that story, but you also get into the audience mind that they have to think of themselves as the leader in this game. How do you get those to work? That's what Berlin Space is for. <laughs> I always loved to draw. I was always really interested in getting the things outside of my head. I remember the, one of the first drawings I remember drawing at least was I drew someone with a sword stabbing someone. My grandma told me like, this is from the devil. You can't draw things like this. Even though she had like a picture of Jesus Christ with his heart like bleeding everywhere. At the time when I was young, I played a lot of video games. And so I was always fascinated with how you get something in that space, how you translate something 2D to 3D. The same with films. I was like really interested in films. Something of those different media and different entertainment um, industries appealed to me quite um, immediately. Essentially, we're making this video game in which the main character, who is this lost God and not necessarily a good person, but they have some common things that in our present day we would say are good. For example, they believe in trans rights, but the ways in which they want to get to the end uh, of their goals are more destructive than joining people together. It's a bit more of a dictatorship. So what we're doing in here is recording the voices of the five main characters that you will meet throughout this journey. And you'll choose whether you want to take what they say and add it to your own way of thinking, which we call the gospel, or you want to discard it and let it get lost within history. I would say the artistic idea usually just comes and then you want to get the image out. And later on, I'll have a desire to do something, archive someone to talk about a particular thing. And I'll look through those images and sometimes those two will have a conversation and it will slowly start to build into basically an aesthetic, I would say. So what we're doing in here is recording the portraits in really slow motion, draping the fabric over them and getting this kind of movement with the fans. And then the voices will be placed over the top of them. So you'll get this slow motion vignette. Even though we're filming them very similarly, the way in which they'll be mashed together will be quite different depending on the essence of each person that we're working with. Welcome to my parents' house, really. I'm actually gonna start with this book because most of what we filmed at Studio Voltaire um, had these textiles in. Something I do often within the practice is I reuse some stuff I've made for a show. So this was uh, something I was uh, testing, trying to build a space out of fabric, and I couldn't help but think that in the end, this looks like a dress. And so um, I wanted to reapproach these as clothing materials, which is why we used them as the clothes that the participants were wearing. At the beginning, when I started making art, I used myself a lot. It gave me a good understanding of figuring out, I guess, my representation within the work. And that changed a lot when I started making games because I needed to see something else. I have this ways of making things, which is I make a music video of myself to test a new technology. And then when I understand it more, I stop using myself and I use other people. Yesterday, when we were filming at Studio Voltaire, is the first time in a long time that I've been in the work. Usually I don't want to be. I like to be behind the camera. Something I think when I made it when I was 16, 17 years old, and so I was uh, obsessively obsessed with painting. I had to mix the exact color that was on the photo I was painting, do a brush stroke, and then remix the color. So obviously everything took so long, but it was the only way my mind could, could work out. I was thinking of it like pixels, to be honest. But it meant that after a while, I didn't want to paint because <laughs> it took too long. 
I never thought of archivist and artist being hand in hand. My exposure to artists was very small and initially I wasn't even going to go and pursue art. I was going to do theoretical physics. I took a year out when I got into my physics place and then everything kind of changed when I fell in love with actually being able to make art outside of a, a constricted boundary. And actually the result of if that time was worth it is based on how you're feeling about the work rather than someone else's comment on it. And so I think then I began to realize that you can be more than one thing at one time. I was looking at the archives a lot and trying to find traces of black trans people or just black people in the past. And the Black Cultural Archives opened, which gave me an idea of, oh, there can be an archive that focuses on a particular group of people. I started to ask, well, how are certain things missing from the archive? And who is allowed to be an archivist? And what does it take to be one? When I started asking those questions, it allowed me to step into that role and say, if I'm an archivist with the skills I currently have, how would I archive someone? And how can we get an archive and record the essence, the small bits of history, the nuance of the individual that would build to a whole rather than starting at the whole and building back? Okay, I'm gonna have to take this down and then put it up here. I'll put it up later. All right, well, you got a real moment there. <laughs> so this is my old bedroom, and I really like it because one, it houses all the work that's being made, but um, it kind of feels like there's an essence of my soul here, like everything I was interested in. So it's got all my like my PSP boxes, and just my little emulation console, which is uh, very legal. I was really into these annuals. <gasps> Some old drawings. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yo, that's crazy. Wow, that is crazy. When do you think they're from? Oh, I don't even know. I don't even know. A successful project is many layers. Um, we're never trying to get a full recreation of an individual. We're trying to capture a small part of whatever they're trying to tell us. So they will tell us a story from their childhood, it will design the characters, the world, the sound, the game, the choices around that one specific moment of their history so that all of that can become um, that uh, particular archive of that moment of the, the communication between us, the l lack of communication, the loss, the mistranslations, everything is in there, allows it to be recorded in a particular way that is then shared again. And so once we've done that, I obviously share it with the individual. And if the product is successful, they think it does record a portion of their life. And if it's not successful, they tell me to go back and do it again. And then, so that's one essence of success. And then the other is the audience's reaction. So there's always a planned audience, but then everyone is also considered because you need to make sure that they choose a place within accessing your work. It's something I really don't like is I don't like passive artworks. And so for me, the fact that the audience member has to feel a bit responsible for what they see, that makes me feel that the work can be successful. Of course, I'm obsessed with the Matrix, so I have the Matrix game. And these covers, like, they're amazing. I obviously am a big PlayStation nerd. I think I bought this two years ago when I was making that game. I, this is the nerd's journey. <laughs> this is the first, like, fashion catalogue I ever got. Yeah, I was really obsessed with this when I was younger. At the time I started my career, the popular thing was to interview us about medicalizing our bodies, the death of, of black trans women in America and all this kind of stuff. And so the advice I would usually give is don't go down that route, go down the route that it feels right within the people around you. Usually if you want to archive a particular community, an interested party will never get close to archiving a group of individuals that they are not part of. You don't get the minutia, you'll get the what they are happy to show you on camera. And I would say that if you're interested in making video games, it's about um, a form of dedication. And so for me, I had to teach myself the 3D um, and the coding and the game design. Um, and it, the way in which I did this wasn't to study it like a class, it was to treat it like a diary. And because you're, I did it every day as a small diary, it begins to take on a role of significance for you. But you also begin to understand that when you're frustrated, it's a tool that can be used to get something out. So you can really use these um, engines, these 3D programs as something a bit more uh, close to heart um, so that uh, it will touch others' hearts as well. 
the ancestors aren't really viewers, they're not visitors, they're a, a way to look back and place ourselves within a canon that makes us feel more prominent rather than a, a phase or a new interesting thing that the media is, is fascinated by. Is that my phone vibrating? <laughs> <laughs>